like, I can keep going if you want. Um, all of these movies as a kid was something that I really loved. Like, mum would make popcorn, we'd sit down together and we'd watch a movie. And it was centered around this idea that there is a quest that everybody's going on, right? And, and usually in that quest, it was really simple. It was like, we're going after treasure. Now, if you're the type of person like me who likes this sort of stuff, um, it wouldn't be a quest without some type of challenge, right? So there's always usually within the movie, there's a tension of some description, right? Whether or not it's like criminals that are on the run looking to get you, or, uh, you know, it, it, the Goonies, you find a map, you can't read the map, but we got the squad, we're good, we're going on to get the treasure. And um, it was a great movie. I loved these types of movies growing up. Like, this was, this was my jam. And I, I remembered, like, um, there were heaps of times within the movies where you think that the outcome was going to be that these kids or teenagers were going to find this treasure of some description and they were going to live rich, which let's be honest, this is every kid's dream, right? Because oftentimes, you, you know, you want all of these things, you didn't have the money to, so you would live vicariously through the idea that the Goonies or whoever, when they get the treasure, they're going to live rich, they're going to get whatever they want, they're going to have maids, butlers, they're going to have everything. Like, Richie Rich ruined me, by the way, as a kid. I was like, this is what life is supposed to be like. <laughs> anyway, so there was this idea that like they would get the treasure and then they would be rich. But I don't know if it was like, it was annoying because there was all these moral things that like the movies were trying to get you to learn, right? And so like they'd find the treasure, but they'd either donate it or it would like <laughs> sink to the bottom and it was like, oh, well, there's that. And it was like, what are we trying to learn here? And then it was all these like hidden messages like, Man, look what happens when everybody works together. Or, man, isn't it awesome when we all have one thing in mind? And because I was a bit of like a troubled kid growing up, mum would always be like, see, Isaiah? Like, see? And I'm like, what? I want them to be rich. Like, I want them to buy bunches of stuff. But it never really worked out like that. But any movie that I was like really invested in involves some type of a quest. I'm an adventure type of guy. Lord of the Rings, I would say one of the greatest movies of all time. Now, if you want to judge me about that, that's fine. There is Christian themes throughout the Lord of the Rings, right? Read the book. It's fantastic. Chronicles of Narnia, love it. Like, I'm a quest guy. I really am about it, right? Anyway, but, but like the gospel flips the quest on its head a little bit. So if you're like me and you like adventure quest, then stay with me for a second because the gospel suggests that the quest that we all were on, we no longer have to be on anymore, right? What the gospel suggests is that the quest that Jesus went on was the quest that we were all once going on. This idea that I needed to pay for sins or I needed to pay for something that I couldn't pay. And eventually I would have to die a sinner's death, but... Jesus goes, no, 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 I'll be the person who does the quest and I'll put on humanity, I'll die on a cross, I'll make the bridge between you and God so that you don't have to go on that quest anymore. So in fact, Jesus is the hero of the story. And I think like in our minds, we know that he's the main character. But I think sometimes we forget that he's the one who was supposed to go on the quest He's already done the quest and my job is to simply receive what he has done for me. This is the good news. This is the gospel. This is the amazing news that we don't have to go on a quest for identity. We don't have to go on a quest for, for, for purpose. We just have to receive the greatest quest that ever happened known to man and it was that Jesus died for you and my sins. That, that's the quest. So the time of message is the quest is over and really it is over. Like we don't have to search anymore for that thing. But I believe with all of my heart that sometimes we can't help it, but we think that we are still the main character of the story and we are still on a quest for meaning and purpose. Is that anybody here? Because I think it's all of us. We are all on a quest for the next, well, probably 17 years old. And I remembered I, um, I, 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 I wanted to be a famous basketball player, like I legitimately did. And so my dad, he, he played quite high up in basketball. And so from grade eight to 12, I'd play basketball, I'd make teams and we'd do state stuff and it was good. Got the gear, I thought I was legit at school, you know, wearing my Queensland gear. It's like, it's like 26 degrees, I've got my full Queensland gear on, like, you know what I mean? Like just flexing on haters, that's what I was doing, right? 
And um, I remembered like, I, I, I peaked at about 16 years old and I stopped sort of making teams and I was like, you know, stop basketball. Uh, I give my life to Jesus and then I move into a discipleship house and I play basketball down the road and I'm just doing it for fun because I'm, I'm over that quest. I thought I was. And somebody came up to me and they were like, hey, we want you to join this, this Type Ends Academy development team, right? And I was like, well, what? Like the Type Ends Academy development team, like that's awesome. I've tried my whole life. I've been on a quest my whole life to get to that position. And then I give my life to Jesus and somebody literally just says, here you go. I'm flinging the door open. And I went to myself, man, isn't it awesome when you give your life to God? All this stuff just pans out. Now listen to this. This, this blew my mind. I felt the Holy Spirit ask me to ask him about it. So I was like, is this a trick question? So I was like, God, well, God, what do you think? And I was young in my faith, very young, maybe a year into my faith. I said, God, what do you think? And I felt the Lord say this, Isaiah, I've got so much better for you. And I realized at that point, I needed to abandon the quest of getting more and of getting value in that and what I'm doing and actually submit to the treasure that's on the inside. I've noticed that that treasure is the great navigator. That treasure is the thing that opens doors and closes doors. That treasure is the one that gets you satisfied in seasons where you've got a lot of money and satisfied in seasons where you don't have a lot of money. It's the thing that remains when everything else fails. What do I need to do? I need to place more value on the treasure and less value on the vessel. I'm abandoning my pursuit, my quest, and I'm embracing the treasure from the inside. I'm the clay, Lord, you're the potter. That's our position. Let's look at Moses. Moses, and this is where we're talking about the imperfectness of us as humans, right? Moses was not a perfect dude. Moses killed somebody. Moses was a, uh, basically was on the run. He was a criminal. He was doing his thing. And Moses, um, Moses was a criminal, yet God saw the fragility of Moses and thought, no, you're my vessel. I'm gonna use you to do something great. And so Moses was what I would like to call um, perfectly imperfect. He was, he was, and which is sort of all of us, right? We're all sort of like that. We're not, we're perfectly imperfect. We don't have it all together. My vessel's got a bit of bumps and a bit of cracks here and it's not really polished over here, but God will use it anyway. And so Moses was, was used, and the Bible says, if we flip into ex, the Exodus story, it says, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant. Listen to this. He wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. So Moses, a fragile man, an imperfect man, was shining the radiance of God. A fragile clay vessel shining the radiance of God. In the same way, you and I, imperfect vessels, fragile by nature, Our actual job is to shine the radiance of God into every situation that we're in. You know what's funny? The Bible says that Moses didn't know his face was shining, but everybody else did. How many times has it felt like, I don't really feel like I'm shining, but do you know that everybody else knows that you are? Why? Because it's not about me, it's about the treasure within So you might be saying, but Isaiah, I can't see the treasure within. The treasure within is not for you to see. It's for others to experience. I'm the fragile vessel with bumps and bruises and and cracks and all of these different types of things, but I'm not placing value on my vessel. I'm placing value on the treasure. And I have to just keep reiterating myself because I feel like our congregation especially, we have a lot of capable, incredible, amazing, diligent, hardworking, talented people. But you're a vessel. He's the treasure. Do you understand? You're awesome. He is the treasure. And when I focus on him being the treasure, it just makes life a lot less about the quest and a lot more about receiving the grace that God has given me to do the thing that he's called me to do. You're awesome, you're talented, but we cannot do this without him. Moses, a fragile man, was shining and radiating God, and this is us as well, but we're supposed to focus on the treasure and not the vessel. Focus on the treasure and not the vessel. Because what, what I've noticed is this, and this is gonna like sting some people today, and it might not. What I've noticed is that when we get obsessed with our vessel, right? When we get obsessed with our vessel, 
We see other people's fragility and weakness, or fragility as weakness, and we forget about our own. This is what I've noticed. When we obsess about the external thing, when I obsess about my vessel, I spot other people's fragility. I spot other people's cracks, and I go, oh, look at that. Look at that weakness. But I really am forgetting that I am just like them. I am a fragile clay jar. I'm gonna be honest with you. As a pastor, you're like, Isaiah, what's your greatest, like, what are the things that you worry the most about people? I'll be honest with you. I worry the most when people get into like vessel inspection, crack inspection. Oh, look, I can see it. Look at what they're doing. Oh, did you hear? Oh, did you know? I'll be honest, this ticks me off more than anything because the scriptures make it clear. Get the log out of your own eye first. But if I can be honest with you, we are all fragile clay jars. It's not about the jar, it's more about the treasure on the inside. So while you're vessel inspecting and pointing out weaknesses, what you're not realising is that God could use that weakness to shine His glory. They're just in a process, just like you are. And another reason why I don't like vessel inspectors is because they almost make it seem like they've already finished the process. No, I'm the clay, you're the potter. Shape me, mould me, God, do what you wanna do in my life. See, the thing about cracks is that God uses those things for His glory to shine through. The holes, the things that are not perfect in my fragile clay jar, it's about the treasure on the inside. Paul says in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 8 to 10, concerning this thing that I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast of my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, I am strong. What Paul is saying is, I pleaded with the Lord. And I said, God, fix the crack here. God, fix the issue here. Would you patch this hole here? God, would you do this here? And what God's answer was is, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. What God is basically saying is the treasure on the inside is sufficient for you. In other words, I will shine through the broken areas in your life to tell a better story. Do you understand how awesome that is? That despite the brokenness, despite the issues, despite the holes, despite the cracks, God's committed to shining through those things to tell a better story. Do you know how awesome that is? I could just stop right here, walk off, we're done. That is great news. That is the gospel. That is what it's all about. That God will use the things that we despise, that God would use the things that we're embarrassed of and we're ashamed of and tell a better story. Moses, a fragile man, murderer on the run. God used him to do the greatest deliverance in the history of, the, of any deliverance that we know of. This is what it's all about. I'm the vessel, God, you are the treasure. I remember, um, and I'm gonna get the key, Gabe to come up. I remember God putting a vision in my heart to do something great for God one day. And I was like, oh. And now, let, let me just translate this, because this is not just about ministry. This is about God putting something in your heart to do significantly one day. And I remember God gave me like a vision to do something significant. And I remember just going, oh, but I don't have like a Christian heritage. Like I didn't have a praying grandma. Like I didn't have a praying mum, you know what I mean? And I started, when God put this thing in my heart, I started just going, God, literally my view was, but look at all the cracks. Look at all of the broken pieces. Look at all of the issues that disqualify me from doing what you've called me to do. Now, if I was say for you, I think a lot of the times we wanna receive God's love but we're like, God, but look at the cracks. Look at the issues. Look at what I'm going through. Look at what I'm dealing with. And we eliminate ourselves from receiving God's love because we focus on the cracks. Where God's like, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. 
In fact, what I will do is I will shine through those cracks and I will tell not only a story of my love towards you, but you will tell a story of my love towards others. This is what's so awesome about the treasure. But can I just be honest with you? You gotta stop this quest of trying to find and acquire. The greatest quest that was ever known is done. It's finished. It's over. Now my focus is simple. It's God. In every season, help me to remember that the treasure is more important than the vessel. (laughs) that the treasure is more important than what I do. It's more important than what I'm trying to acquire. It's, it's, it's more important. It's more important. We need to focus on the treasure. I'm gonna say it a million times and not the vessel. The quest is over. It's over. That's the title of my message and that's the end of my point. The quest is over. No more. Could it be that we're on a quest somewhere over the rainbow? Dorothy said that. The movie scared me when I was a kid. It's somewhere over there. It's 10 years from now. It's five years from now. It's when I'm in this place and when my debt's paid off and when I'm over here, that's when the quest is over. No, the quest is over for you because you've received the great treasure that remains within. What my focus needs to be is more on that, less on that. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all of these things will be added to you. Okay, so there is something that we're supposed to seek after, right? You know what it is? It's Him. You know what it is? It's the treasure. We just got it around the wrong way. I'm seeking all these other things. We get into quest mode. Stop that. No, 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 no. God, I gotta seek you and all of these things. And you know what? Can I tell you something? The fruit of seeking God in these moments is guess what happens? Listen, listen, I love this so much because this is what God does to me. When I focus more on the vessel, decorations, maybe if I add this and do this and get this, and then hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. But when I focus on the treasure, Him, guess what happens? All of a sudden, I start to overflow with gratitude. Man, I start to go, Man, God, thank you for my health. God, thank you that you pulled me through a place that I thought I'd never get out of. God, thank you for my wife. She's amazing. God, thank you for our business. God, you've opened doors that we never could have opened in a million years. God, thank you for your grace over my life. Now, guess what? When I start to seek Him, the quest starts to get over, I'm done with, I'm done with that. And I start just going, man, I can think about a million things that God's taken me from, delivered me from, added in my life. And all of a sudden now I'm overwhelmed with gratitude. The fruit of valuing the treasure is that you're filled with gratitude. It's like, man, God, you're so awesome in my life. Now, I know that I haven't been able to get everything that I thought, but God, I trust you. Why? Because the quest is over. I'm seeking you first. And then all of these things will fall into place. You know, in, in our lives, and I'm just going to close with this. In our lives, we, the, this is what I've noticed, right? Like with, with, our, with our pottery stuff, like um, the more that we've used it, um, the more that, you know, cracks just start to show. Right? And this has got nothing to do with it. It just happens. You drop it, like you, you bump it, whatever. Crack shows. And it's the same with us, right? The more life that we live, right? Think about it. The more life that we live, things just happen. It's like, man, hurt here, upset here, frustrated here, let down here. It just happens. Look, think about it. 33 years old. I've got a hip issue. Well, I had one. And I don't even know how it happened, fam. (laughs) This is crazy. As life just goes on, things just happen. But I'm telling you, in the kingdom of God, and I want you to hear this, in the kingdom of God, the more cracks, the better. The more issues, the more broken pieces, the better. Why? Because if you were to imagine it, like the treasure or the light shining from within, it still continues to tell the story of God's faithfulness in your life. It continues to tell the story that even though you've been through here, even though you've walked through there, I'm with you and I will never leave you or never forsake you. 
Our goal is not to be a perfect vessel. It's to be a vessel that knows that what's perfect is the treasure that lies on the inside of me. So the quest is over. God, you've done it. I'm gonna receive that with everything that I've got. Every head bowed, all eyes closed. I'm gonna pray for everybody this morning. And God, it's our prayer that you would, God, just change our internal narrative. God, change our internal compass to think that it's somewhere over the rainbow. If I get this, if I do that. But there's nothing wrong with God pursuing and being diligent. But God, I think in all of our hearts, we know that when we've made it about the wrong thing. And so God, we just take a moment this morning to value the treasure more than anything else in our life. God, it is more about you and less about me. God, I pray, Lord, that we would seek you first above all else. God, I thank you that as we do that, all these things will fall into place. And so God, I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of people in this room to value the treasure more than the vessel. You know, just with our eyes closed, I actually feel to pray for people who, um, who, who struggle with different, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's just the, the fact that, you know, it's hard to see the treasure because of all the cracks and different things. I just felt specifically to pray for you this morning. And so if that's you, I just want you to receive this prayer. God, I pray that you would open their eyes to see, Lord, that you were working that you are doing incredible things, God, that we are the clay and you are the potter. God, we resubmit our lives to you. We give it to you afresh this morning and we say, God, have your way in our lives. Seek him first with everything that we've got, with all eyes closed, every head bowed. Maybe you're in this place and you haven't even started a faith journey, but after this morning's message, you wanna receive that, 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 that great news, the amazing news. If that's you this morning, just with every head bowed and all eyes closed, if you could just give me a wave, I'd love to pray for you, um, for you to receive God, maybe for the first time. Anybody in the room? Awesome, fantastic, fantastic. God, we value the treasure. The same Spirit that rose you from the dead lives and dwells in me. And we choose to put our eyes on you this morning the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author of our story. God, we submit our lives afresh to you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus.